Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video we're going to talk about the marine shipping industry. Marine shipping is a really big industry. Every single day, thousands of big containers arrive at seaports from all over the world. They go from country to country. Each shipment represents a specific part of the supply chain. One shipment may be patio furniture from Thailand bound for a Milan retailer. Another shipment may be avocados from Chile destined for a supermarket in Berlin. Or maybe shoes being shipped from China to a retailer in Seattle, Washington. Every shipment is unique in that part of the supply chain. More than half the goods moved internationally are by sea. Let's go through the process from beginning to end on how it works. It starts with the initial order. Say there's a store in New Jersey that sells athletic supplies. They're running low on this season's hot new shoes. But those shoes are manufactured in China. So that store in New Jersey places an order for 500 pairs of shoes. Now the shoe company works with a freight forwarder. And that company arranges transport from the Chinese factory to that company in New Jersey. The freight forwarding company charges a fee to deal with all the logistics because there's many steps to get the shoes from China to New Jersey. First, let's start from the warehouse to the truck. A trucking company arrives at the Chinese factory and loads the order of 500 shoes along with many other orders from other retailers. And they load these shoes into a 40 foot container. And for security reasons, that container is bolted shut and fitted with a high security seal. So the container will not be opened again until it arrives in the United States. Unless of course customs inspects it. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Now let's load the product onto the vessel. So the truck drops the container off at the port where it's loaded onto the ship. And a freight forwarding company has contracted with the container shipping line. And documentation has to be submitted to the government authorities, both in China and the US. And this document or contract includes the exact contents that's in the container, the name of the exporting company, the importing company, and which companies are transporting the cargo from point to point. Now the big journey starts. The container of shoes are sitting on the vessel along with many other containers. It takes about two weeks to get from China to the western part of the US. But since this retailer is in New Jersey, the ship is probably going to go to the eastern part of the US, which takes about a month. Now the ship arrives in the US at the port. After receiving proper clearance, the vessel docks at a spot adjacent to large cranes. And those cranes are going to be used to unload the containers because these containers are really big and really heavy. So the offloading process begins. Many, many dock workers are working on this vessel, sometimes over 100 per ship. And there's all different people working. There's the crane operators, longshoremen, clerks. And the next step is clearing customs. So custom officials specifically inspect certain containers or randomly select certain containers because they're looking for illegal things like drugs or legal things. Some items aren't supposed to be shipped to the United States or if they're shipped to the United States, a company has to pay a lot in taxes and fees. So say for instance, it's more expensive to ship cigarettes than shoes. More expensive in terms of fees and taxes. A company can say they're shipping shoes and actually put cigarettes. So that's why customs does a check to make sure everything is up to code. Once the container is cleared by customs, workers load the container onto a special truck. Now the container of shoes will be trucked to a distribution center. Sometimes it's cheaper to ship containers by train to the distribution center. But of course not all cities have train access. Now the last step is the final delivery. The truck or train arrives at an import distribution center. The container is open and the orders by individual stores are separated and prepared for shipment. The next day a truck delivers the 500 pairs of shoes to the New Jersey athletic store. Now that's the shipping process. Let's talk more about from an investing point of view. How do I identify stocks as an investment opportunity? The supply of ships in the market, the total ships out there that are moving goods is highly correlated to the profitability of shipping companies. Because the cost to maintain a ship is fairly fixed. 
obviously depending on the age of the ship. As a ship gets older, it does cost more to maintain. So you pretty much know within reason how much you're gonna spend to maintain a ship. The hard part to figure out is the revenue each ship receives, which can vary a lot depending on the number of ships in the entire market. There's always gonna be demand by companies looking to transport products across the ocean. So if you want to transport items within a country or within landlocked countries, the most efficient way is railroad. So if you want to transport from Seattle to Virginia, probably railroad or even Canada to US, railroad. But if you want to ship from US to Europe, you can't do railroad, you have to do vessel. And if you want to transport by plane, say you wanted to transport goods from China to US by plane, it's really expensive. And you can't really fit that much product on a plane as you could on a vessel or railroad. That's why when you need to ship across the ocean, by vessel is really the only viable option. When the number of ships remaining in the market declines, the remaining ships can charge more per delivery. So say lots of companies have older ships and they scrap their ships and demand starts to go up. So now demand is higher than supply. So shipping companies make a lot more money when that happens. And what happens when shipping companies make a lot more money? They buy more ships to grow and scale their business. But when the number of ships in the market gets too high, when supply is greater than demand, the shipping companies are unable to demand higher prices and they start to lose money. This vicious cycle happens a lot in the shipping industry. That's why it's such a volatile industry to invest in. Another thing to consider is the price of steel because most of the ship is made out of steel. When steel prices are high, shipping companies are more likely to scrap old ships and of course less likely to buy new ships. The reason they scrap old ships is because it costs a lot to maintain and if steel prices are high, they get a lot more money when they scrap it. When steel prices are low, shipping companies are more likely to buy new ships because they're cheaper. The ideal situation is to buy shipping company stock when there are less ships in the market and sell your stock when there's too many ships in the market. And the best way to figure out shipping rates is to look at the Baltic Dry Index. This is the average price of transport of dry bulk materials across more than 20 routes. So you can see in 2008, 2009, if you own shipping stocks, you made a ton of money, lots of dividends and stock price appreciation. But it crashed in 2009 and it did come up after a year or so. And then it's been a rock bottom for almost a decade. It did have a really nice surge in 2021. And that's why people were buying stocks like Zim, getting huge dividend payments, but it crashed once again. So this could be a good time to buy shipping stocks. But if you own shipping stocks now, it may not make sense to sell because prices are so low. Because if you bought it around here and sold up here, you could have 20x your money. And if you bought it down here and sold up here, you could have 10x your money. So it's a really volatile industry. So this index pretty much reflects the supply and demand of the market. So when there's less vessels in the market, the prices get really high. When the market is flooded with vessels, the shipping rates get really low. And demand is fairly steady. It generally goes up a little over time. Except during COVID, demand did crash a lot. But you can see demand came back really strong. But these shipping companies were making so much money, they all started buying new vessels. What happens when the number of vessels goes up? That means supply outpaces demand and rates come down. So if you own shipping stocks right now, you're really hoping for a time like 2007, 2008. Those were the good times for the shipping companies. There are 29 stocks in the marine shipping industry and they're all pretty small companies. The biggest is 3.8 billion market cap. And most of these companies have a ton of non-current assets because they have to carry the ships on their balance sheet at cost minus depreciation. And some of these companies pay a crazy high yield. Zim is over 100%. And remember, yield is looking at the past, not the future. And the reason it's so high is because the stock price came down so much. When a stock price goes down, the dividend yield goes up. That's assuming they pay the same yield as they paid in the past, which they probably won't. 
because the company's not going to pay over a 100% dividend yield. They'll probably cut their dividend to be more in line with the stock price. Look at the crazy amount of cash flow Zim generates, $6.5 billion, which is triple their market cap. It's crazy how undervalued some of these companies look. But like I said, all these ratios are based off the past. Do you think a company like Zim can maintain this free cash flow in the future? I don't know. Only time will tell. So hope you learned something new. Subscribe, leave a like, comment. Talk to you soon.